Hello, and thanks for joining me for another very special update episode of Paternity Court. Two dads, double the doubt. Every child needs a father, and every day couples come to court seeking answers. With two or more possible fathers in court, emotions run high, and the truth often lies somewhere in the middle. In this first case, a fast food encounter with one man and an emotional goodbye with another brought a mother and her lovers to court. So I grabbed her number, we was texting and stuff, and she wanted me to come up there on her break. And, and she even told me to bring a condom just to be safe. It was a combo special they had. The <laughs> You. you didn't do nothing. You ain't buy no pampers, no whites, no bottles. I did that. You ain't do nothing. You ain't even check on him. That, I just want to know, because it's, it's multiple people that was having affairs with her. I just want to know. So you feel like she was having sex with other men? Oh, yes. Oh, he looked like the baby, too. He wants to be a father to Jeremiah more than he does. And he's willing to step up and take that responsibility. The biological father is... Mr. Fisher. All right. Do we need diapers right now? You keep saying, this is not a joke. <laughs> it's my kid. Why can't I joke about it? I'm pretty happy now. After the results, Mr. Fisher had jokes and Mr. Tate was disappointed. Are either of them in Jeremiah's life? Ms. Atkins sent the court this update. Since paternity court, Jayani is definitely taking the steps he needs to take as far as being in Jeremiah's life. He's been asking to pick him up and see him, so that's one thing that I'm really happy about. Jadrian has offered to be Jeremiah's godfather, and his family's just been really supportive and calling and checking on me and Jeremiah. Thank you guys so much. Now that's a great way of turning a negative DNA result into a positive experience. Up next, two men claimed 36-year-old Crystal Scott as their daughter. What took them so long to get a DNA test? Watch this. I'm really upset because I don't know who my dad is. So this is a 35-year-old mystery. She's my third child. And you believed she was your daughter? No if, no answer about it. Her mother is your wife? Still is. My dad here, he raised me. You had an eight-year affair with this man's wife. I did. Why not make it right from the beginning? Instead of having me go through years and years of pain. And I thought about all those things that you're seeing right there. What's gonna come after that, you know? Are we, are him and I are gonna cut, get into it? One us go to graveyard, one us go to prison. In the case of Lewis versus Scott, the biological father is Mr. Lewis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After the result, Miss Scott was fearful that the relationship with Mr. Scott and his family would change. She recently sent the court this update. Things have been progressing. I still talk to my dad, who will always be my dad, my biological father. We're planning on meeting soon. Um, as far as my mom, we don't talk. She's not ready to live in her truth. But when she does um, become ready to live in her truth, then we can sit down, talk about it, and have a relationship. Miss Scott is adjusting to her new truth, and hopefully, she and her mother can sit down one day soon and have a heart to heart. Now, this next case really worked my nerves. Ashley McElhone came to court with two men, and they both believed they were her son's father. After uh, he came out, they handed him to me. <laughs> you signed the birth certificate? Yeah, acknowledgement of paternity, and he's got my last name. I was uncertain of if he was the father or if the other partner I was sleeping with was the father. But you still believe Noah's your biological child? Yes, I do. Who do you want to be in a relationship with? with Who Mark. do you want to be in a relationship with? With Mark. When's the last time you were intimate with Ms. McElhone? On Tuesday night. Oh, 
on Tuesday Absolutely night. not. You just gave birth. They just sold you up. And you are confident yes. your testimony is true. Yes. You actually asked this court to have a lie detector test yes. administered to prove that your testimony was true. Yes. Mr. Revere, you were asked the following questions. In the past month, have you had sexual intercourse with Ms. McElhoney? You said yes. The lie detector determined you were being truthful. <clears throat> but I didn't know that was done behind my back. Are you suggesting you should that something truth. was done behind your back? Right. That case still gets me heated. Ms. McElhone was playing both of them, but were either of her lovers the father? Stay with us until after the break for the answer and so much more. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Welcome back to Paternity Court. It takes at least two men to create paternity doubt, and that's what I'm bringing you today. Cases with double the doubt. Before the break, Mark Tisdale was hurting and could barely look at the other possible father in court. To make matters worse, I uncovered that his girlfriend was sharing her baby and her body with both of them. Let's get to the results. The biological father is Mr. Revere. You ain't never gonna change. I mean, you could say otherwise, but I, I am. You're not. And I completely understand if you can't forgive me. You something else. <sighs> I just had to sit back and watch that. You so used to controlling him. And me. Since leaving court, Mr. Tisdale and Ms. McElhone have both declined to update the court on the status of their relationship. However, the court did hear from Mr. Revere. Ever since taking the lie detector test, me and Ashley hasn't been talking that much like we used to. I get to see my son a lot, and I am 100% glad that Noah is mine. Mr. Revere is being a responsible father and taking steps to ensure that he is a part of his son's life. Now, I do believe this next case was a paternity court first. Kayla Knight named her son after her boyfriend. But there was a possibility that her godbrother was his biological father. We ended up having protective sex that night, and then we ran out of condoms. And while we were doing it, I told him to go ahead and get me pregnant. That's what I told him. And as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I called Demarcus and let Demarcus know, it's a po I'm pregnant right now, and it's a possibility that it's Ladarius's baby or your baby. So the other possible father is your godbrother? Right, oh. Ladarius. What are you making this look bad? Lord. Like, it could possibly be his. It could possibly be yours. We want to know, he want to know, he need to know, we need to know. I'll say it again. Oh, Lord. Either Mr. Patterson or Mr. Sigler were going to leave my court disappointed. I'll bring you the results and more shocking and surprising updates when Paternity Court continues. I'm back with more of today's special Paternity Court update episode, where we take a look at cases with double the doubt. Before the break, I brought you the case of Patterson versus Knight. Ms. Knight admitted to having sex with her godbrother and didn't know if he or her boyfriend was the father. It's time for the results. The biological father is Mr. Sigler. <gasps> heard about it. I looked at him as mine, but at the end of the day, I'm happy for him. He figured out who his real dad is, you know? Uh -huh. Since leaving court, Mr. Sigler told my staff he is going through the legal process to change his son's last name. Mr. Patterson said he's gotten over the disappointment and he's devoting himself fully to his current relationship. Now, this next case involved a history of not two, but four possible fathers. 
It's been emotional, confusing, I'm embarrassed. Right. It's right. important to know where you come from. Where, who am I? Four possible fathers. Oh. I was dating um, my ex, and then um, Mr. McKinney was going off to war, so I went to visit him where he lived at and spend the weekend with him. Um, I went to go visit my sister, and I hooked up with uh, Mr. Bryson. Um, then I decided to move um, back to my hometown, and the weekend that I moved back, um, I met Mr. Brown. When did you find out you could potentially be Ms. Gutierrez's biological uh, father? Last week. Oh, my God, is this my oh. baby? Could this be my baby? In this courtroom, we deliver the truth. Mr. McKinney, you are not her father. Mr. Bryson is her father. After court adjourned, my staff put Ms. Gutierrez in touch with her biological father. I know you're wondering what happened, and I have this update for you. I did get in touch with Mr. Bryson. I wrote him um, a few times. We wrote back and forth, and me and, me and Mr. Bryson don't speak at all now as of today, so we all lost all contact. How do I feel? I feel great that after 26 years, I found out who my biological father was. So I'm able to move on and kind of close that chapter there. I do want to say thank you again, Judge Lake, for everything that you did and helping me get the results that I needed. Ms. Gutierrez seems to have accepted that her father isn't ready to build a relationship just yet. Her mother, Ms. Sullivan, also touched base with the court and said she is so glad she doesn't have to lie to her daughter anymore. Up next, a 19-year-old woman brought her alleged father and her parents to court for answers. I recently got in contact with him in, over social media and asked, are you going to come to my graduation or are you going to lie and say you're coming and then not show up? She said, what, you don't want to talk to your firstborn that you abandoned? And then you say, you may not be my daughter. We were supposed to get a paternity test about four or five years ago, but your mom never went through with it. It's been a burden with this paternity. They deprived me of the chance of her That's not falling true. in love with me for the first time. It's, it's over with now. It don't have to be over it's with over if, you're, with if you're my daughter. Mr. Johnson, you are her father. Okay. So good. Ms. May immediately went to her parents, and many of you have asked if she accepted Mr. Johnson as her father. Mr. Johnson recently sent the court this update. It's been sweet knowing the truth now, knowing that Amber is my daughter. I just recently attended her graduation. Beautiful. I just want her to know that I'm here for her. I love her. I'm extremely proud of her. If she just give me the time to, I can be the biological father that she always dreamt of and more. There is so much warmth and emotion coming from Mr. Johnson. I love hearing that Ms. May is doing well and spending time with her dad. Moving on, it's time for my last case of the day. Ms. Boone didn't know if her father was her uncle or if her uncle was her father. Talk about a case of double the doubt. Watch this. I want to build a relationship with him but I don't want to build a relationship with my uncle if he's my dad. So the plaintiff could be your father or your uncle. Yes, Your Honor. And the defendant could be your father or your uncle. Yes, Your Honor. I found out that my brother and Gina was together. Oh! <laughs> you caught your wife in bed with your brother? Yes. Mr. Shockley, how do you end up sleeping with your brother's wife? Well, I thought they were broke up at the time. But I mean, is there any brother code? Not in small town. You said not in a small town? <laughs> <laughs> she was my little girl. I was there during the whole pregnancy. She's my daughter. It's an emotional roller coaster. The testimony in this case was honest and at times shocking. Miss Boone was caught in the middle and just wanted to know the truth. Stay with me for the surprising results, and you will also hear from Miss Boone 
after the break. Welcome back. I'm almost at the end of today's special update episode of Paternity Court. Two dads, double the doubt. Before the break, I brought you the case of Shockley versus Shockley. These two brothers had long-term relationships with Gina Grove in their younger days. 32 years later, Ms. Grove's daughter wanted to know once and for all, is my father my uncle or is my uncle really my dad? Here's the answer I gave her. In the case of Shockley versus Shockley, the biological father is Mr. Steve Shockley. Yes! Oh, yes. It was a long time coming, but Ms. Boone left my court with the truth. Steve Shockley is her biological father. This is one of those cases where you just have to find the magic in the mess. Ms. Boone touched base with the court and let us know how this mess turned out once they got back home. Hey, just likes, how are you? Well, since we left court, my relationship with my dad has been great. We talk almost every single day. Um, we don't get to see each other as much as we would like to because he does live so far away from me. One thing that we love the most is the fact that out of six kids, I'm the only girl. Our bond has gotten even stronger and our relationship is even better. Thank you so much for giving me the answers that I have wanted and needed for so long. See you later. Ms. Boone seems so much happier than she did in court. This is a huge adjustment for all involved, but it sounds as if it's all working out. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you are struggling with a question of paternity, my court is here for you. Join the conversation on all of our social media platforms. Thanks for watching, and please remember to live a limitless life.